Whenever I look at you now, bro, I think of that frog picture, yo. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth Podcast. I'm Anish Gupta. I'm Shrikar Gendron. And I'm Jack Smith. Somehow I got bumped to last in this intro thing. I don't know. Yeah. I go to town for one weekend, and you guys steal it from me. <laughs> hey, how were the frogs, though, in Arnold? They, they were pretty great, but, you know, back in town now, <laughs> what are we doing this episode, Anish? Well, I mean, since I did the intro, I guess I'll handle this. So we're going to kind of discuss the stat leaders. Each of us kind of had our own predictions for basic stats like passing touchdowns, passing yards, receiving yards, some on defense, interceptions, tackles for loss, etc. So I, get, I think I should get it started if you guys are okay with that. I think let's get started let's get with it. passing yards. Yeah, just um, keep in mind that these are, these are our predictions. Obviously, they're opinions, so none of them can exactly be wrong until they're proven wrong. But this is just no we facts. Think. They're also yeah. very, very early, so keep in mind on that. There hasn't even been OTAs <laughs> yet, so these are very early. Keep in mind some of them might surprise you, but I think a lot of them are kind of dating back to last year. So if you guys don't mind, I might start it off here. So for passing yards, there were a lot of options, right? I think the easy bet was maybe Patrick Mahomes. I think that was probably an easy bet, but I'm actually going to go with Matt Ryan. And the reason why I'm going to go with Matt Ryan is because he's always been just a consistent 4,500-plus uh, type of guy. And he throws the ball a lot, uh, especially with the Falcons offense. And I know Todd Gurley is there, but it's just the weapons around him. I mean, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, I think those are two guys that will get enough separation consistently, uh, especially in the NFC South with a loaded division. He might be down in the, some games, causing him to throw the ball. Todd Gurley might get stuffed knowing the defensive lines that the Panthers have. Uh, the Buccaneers definitely have one. Can't ignore the Saints with uh, Cameron Jordan. So I think just Matt Ryan's going to throw the ball a lot. I can really – I can – I, I'm hovering 4,900. I could see him breaking the 5,000 yard mark. So, what are your guys' initial thoughts? And then, if you guys want to give your kind of stat leader, yeah, sure, I think it's. Mind. I think it's. Not you want to go or should I go? No, you go. Yeah, so I think I think it's fair if you have Matt Ryan there. I had him like third. Uh, I didn't go with Ryan or Patrick Mahomes. Uh, rather, I went with Dak Prescott. Um, in 2019, Prescott finished second in <laughs> passing yards behind Jameis Winston with 4,902. And Garbage this offseason, the Sorry. This offseason, the Cowboys added another weapon to their second-ranked passing attack, selecting CeeDee Lamb with the number 17 overall pick. And we know CeeDee Lamb can make plays on short, uh, intermediate, deep throws. He averaged 19 yards per catch as a collegian at Oklahoma. He also forced a missed tackle on 42% of his receptions, and that was actually a pretty crazy stat to me. Yeah. So Prescott's going to have Lamb. He's going to have Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, who racked up 1,107 yards in 2019. Uh, these three wide receiver sets. Uh, Tony Pollard could also see more action in the passing game as long with Elliott. I mean, okay. I think Prescott could. I think Prescott could rack up five thousand plus yards through the air. I mean, that that's a bold prediction by me. But of course, these are all early. But uh, I'm going Dak Prescott here. Uh, uh, of course, honorable mention was Patrick Mahomes. Jack, you want to keep on going? I was going? so I'll, I'll excited. To I was so excited to roll out Dak Prescott. You guys know I do not like Dak Prescott as a quarterback. Even talked about it on the Cowboys episode we had. I was so excited to surprise you with that. And Schrieger just comes in, steals my thunder. But I've got <laughs> Dak Prescott, too. And I thought about Matt Ryan. I did think about Patrick Mahomes. But Dak Prescott was among, the, I think, the top three in passing yards last season. He was and, top two. He yeah, was second. He was second. And the weapons around him, A, got better. And he got a coach that wants to pass the ball more. So I just don't see any part of that recipe that doesn't see him throwing for the same volume or even more. Uh, so I just I have Dak Prescott. The weapons around him are great, and Mike McCarthy will want to throw the ball a ton, as we see what he did with Aaron Rodgers in the past. So I've got Dak Prescott for passing yards, and this was one of the easier ones, I think, in my opinion. I wanted to give a quick reaction, if you guys don't mind, to Dak Prescott sure. when you said that, because you guys, it's two to one here. But look, I like Jack's analysis on it. I think Jack made a great point about Mike McCarthy, but again, one, a lot of his stats were in garbage time. It doesn't matter. Uh, see, that's the thing. He no, I know. I know. No, 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 his division did get better, though. It I think did, we can all concede that. It is still weak, but it did get better. And not only that, I think they're going to give the ball to Zeke more. I think McCarthy has learned that passing only has not worked for him in the last nine years. It's been a while since he's, been, he's had playoff success, and that is the reason why. For example, against the Seahawks in the 2014 NFC Championship, they did not run the ball, and that, that, bit him, that literally bit him in the butt because they were up 16-0, and they blew the lead. So I agree with you. Dak Prescott can be in that top five, but I just don't. 
I agree he will get the ball out. Like I can see him going for 4,500, but I don't, I don't believe he will repeat what he did last year just because I believe he'll play games more tight. I think they're going to run the ball a lot more knowing that Dak Prescott, in my opinion, I have not seen him do well without Zeke. And that is my whole, you know, the whole Dak Wentz debate. That is a huge knock for me. Just, I haven't, he hasn't done well without Ezekiel Elliott. And what am I getting from him? I, I don't know next year. Obviously the whole contract situation is up in flames. So I don't trust Dak Prescott there, but I do want to throw out a sleeper and I've talked about it before. Uh, just a quick one. Uh, another quarterback in the NFC East, Daniel Jones. And I really, I am a firm belief. I do like him. And I'm telling you, I think he's, he, they're giving him the green light to throw. They're giving it, they're giving it to him. He's thrown for a lot of touchdowns. I think, I think he could crack the top five in his sophomore year. And I know it's, it doesn't have to be, he doesn't have to, you know, wow everyone and throw for like 5,000, but I think he can crack. I think he can hit 4,500, maybe even lead the league. I think they're going to let him throw a lot. They're going to probably be down in a lot of games. So Daniel Jones, they're going to give him the green light, try and see if he can develop. Like I think he can. So I think Daniel Jones is a bit of a sleeper there. If you guys want to give kind of your quick thoughts on that. Well, I, I kind of want to go back to what you were saying about Dak and the fact that Mike McCarthy will run the ball more. You saw that Mike McCarthy had success when he had great receiver rooms. And when he didn't, and that started to, to trail off the receiving core in Green Bay, that's when he got True. fired and they weren't able to do well. True. Now they draft C.D. Lamb so he can have that third receiving option. I believe that, that this team is going to throw the ball so much. Yes, Zeke will be involved. And, I mean, he'll probably be in a 1,000-yard rusher because he's Ezekiel Elliott. But they're going to throw the ball so much. And, yes, the division got better, but it's still the worst in the league. And they still get to yeah, play. Yeah, I, I can give you that. They still get to play a, a Eagles secondary that isn't tremendous twice a year. A Redskins team that Clay, still, Jenkins, it's better. E, it's no, better. Eagles secondary improved. It's, it's better. It's still not. It's still not great. And they get to. I, I can give you the argument that Giants secondary is not bad with the uh, Jabril Peppers. I think. I mean, they're not bad. Like none they're, of the they're not bad, but they're not. They're not top of the league. They're they're bottom half, I'd say, in the league for secondaries. Uh, so they get not to compared play, to the other divisions, though. I wouldn't give you that. I mean, I don't really know, but I mean, six games against those teams that are, they're always, I think, an underwhelming division. And this team is going to throw the ball so much. The weapons around him improved. I feel like everything is lining up for Dak to lead the league in passing yards. Mm -hmm. It's a tough, it's a tough thing. I think, I think Matt Ryan is better suited with the weapons that he, because I trust Julio, I trust Calvin Ridley. Um, and I trust that him with that division is going to be tougher and he's going to have to throw the ball in order for them to win. I don't think they're going to win games with Todd Gurley. So I think it's a fair argument though. I will give you that Dak Prescott can crack it. I'm still unsure about him. I don't trust him, but I think it's a fair argument. But if you guys want to go on to passing touchdowns, uh, I actually got one guy that look, people are sleeping on him. I'm going to go with Carson Wentz for passing touchdowns and Listen, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, when People his hear you when 2017, 2017, he led the league by a long shot. It was 33 touchdowns, and I believe, I think it was 13 games or 12 games uh, before he tore his ACL. He led the league. Last year, when he was throwing the literally garbage cans, he had 27 touchdowns, which is pretty Hey, impressive. don't talk about Nelson Aguilar like that. He went to USC. You know that. <laughs> no, but he can't. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Jack. Jack, you can't call Jack as well as Nelson Aguilar. No hands, buddy. No hands. I'm telling you, he's 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 gonna be the one guy I know that's not gonna catch the coronavirus. So two thousand two thousand yards. No, here's the thing. Listen, I'm telling you, he has the he has better weapons now. I believe I I know Jeffrey and Jackson and uh, Jalen Rigger are coming uh, coming to this uh, receiver group. It's got to be better than what he had last year, man. I, I I truly feel for the guy, like honestly. And he has Zach Ertz still, Dallas Goddard. So he's got a decent receiving group. Um, and just Carson Wentz throws the he. I'm telling you, he can find anyone in the end zone at any in any part, in the back of it, in the front of it, in the middle. He is amazing in throwing the football in tight spaces. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you, you guys are sleeping. You guys are forgetting he led the league his sophomore year in passing touchdowns. And he just threw for 27 last year with, again, nobody and only seven picks. I'm telling you guys, I think he's going to lead the league in passing touchdowns. See, I mean, we're not exactly sleeping on him because we hadn't said a single thing about him yet, but – that being said, I, I thought about Wentz. The problem is I think his receiver unit for at least leading the league in passing touchdowns, it's about a year away. I don't think that Rager is going to come in as rookie. It's very ball. uncertain. Okay, but who did it's he have in 2017 when he was leading it? He had Alshon, Ertz Jeffrey. Ertz played basically out of his mind. Huh? Ertz played out of his mind that year. Ertz played well. No, but Ertz had Ertz had receptions, not yards. I didn't I didn't give – but he, he only had eight touchdowns that year. But the, I think that – I just think that – 
Like eight, I know eight is Wentz decent. will be but good, not... but I think you're just forgetting that Patrick Mahomes is a football player in the NFL. I know how much how many, he is. only threw for 26 last year because guess what? He didn't need to throw as many as he did his first year because his defense got better. And I think his defense is still there. Whether they, whether they have Chris Jones or not for next season, at least, I think they're going to keep him for next year. Uh, I don't think he's going to get traded. Um, so how many so... did Wentz throw last year? Huh? How Wentz? many did Wentz throw last year? Oh, Wentz threw for more. 27. How, how many did he throw last year, though? 27. How many more games did he play? I think it was two or three. Uh, oh yeah, two. Mahomes only missed uh, two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he he threw what like one less, one one less, two less. In, so what in what makes less. you okay? Look, I think people are people are forgetting right with Patrick Mahomes. I agree. Look, I'm a huge Mahomes supporter. I think we've said that. I've told you, Jack, countless times in that whole. It was just about just, the only thing you could bring up in that episode. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I, but well said. I mean, why else did he get five hundred three million dollars? Because he is that dude. He is the best player in the NFL. But he doesn't. I don't need him to put godlike stats. I need him to win games, and that's what he does for me. So does it Patrick mean Mahomes, he won't, Just because you don't no, need him, but that doesn't mean he's I, not going to put some godlike stats. He's God-like easily going to throw for at least thirty five. I think we can all give him that. Maybe even I, I think mean, he thirty can is a guarantee. I think thirty. For, okay, Shrikar, look, forty touchdowns is very hard to do. I think, I think you, he can get. So I think you guys are under. Look, Patrick Mahomes is godlike talent but 40 touchdowns is insane andrew luck has only done that once in his career many quarterbacks have only cracked that 40 touchdown uh marker twice twice in their career it's very hard to do patrick mahomes is the guy that can do it but look i think they're gonna run the ball a little bit more now that they have clyde head edwards alaire at however clyde edwards alaire mm-hmm. uh, however you and he's an above player. average receiver damian, the best receiver damian williams is gonna damian williams is gonna get more carries i think i think you guys gotta respect that and Again, Patrick Mahomes is going to have to throw the ball less because the Chiefs' defense is still there. It's still pretty good. And you saw that last year. I saw that last year. I saw that he didn't have to make the same throws that he had to make in 2018 where he was running all over the place, you know, slinging it, no look, all this stuff, right, for 50 touchdowns. He doesn't, he doesn't need to do that next season. He doesn't need to. That being said, he'll still get his numbers. But I'm sorry, I'm not convinced that he's going to lead. I think Carson Wentz is going to come out of nowhere. Just How many do you think Carson Wentz is going to get? I, if I were to, okay, I think ceiling, ceiling 42. Dude, Andrew Luck only did that once in his career. (laughs) Okay, but Carson Wentz is more talented than Andrew Luck. I'm just, I'm sorry. I think Carson Wentz is more talented. And Patrick Mahomes is more talented. Patrick Mahomes is more talented. He's more talented, but where, okay, a guy who played 12, or sorry, 14 games only threw for 26. Why is that? They were winning games. They were winning games. He was injured. Yes. He was injured for two games. He was out the game. It doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean he wasn't nagged with it the game before and the game after as he came back. Look, one, I think Watkins is gone anyway, so he's not going to have the same elite group that he had. I, I, I know you, he still has Kelsey Hill, Hardman, and Robinson, and you got Edward Solaire catching passes out of the backfield. Do you think you think that's Watkins still will be that's traded? still pretty good? You huh? think Watkins will be traded? Tough to say. I think he will because his contract's too big. Okay, I, I don't so, think they. So I Chris think they're going to. What Chris Jones hasn't signed his franchise tag. Huh? Chris Jones hasn't signed his franchise tag. No, they're going to keep Chris Jones. I think they're going to get rid of Watkins. How are they going to get rid of Watkins? $503 million. See, you guys are underestimating this deal. I, I know we didn't do an episode on it, but it's a very friendly deal. You guys are very under – Jack, I know you didn't look at the deal. I did. It's five hundred three. It's four hundred fifty. His salary cap only increases each year. So for the next two years, his salary is still the same as what he's making. He's only making twenty seven in the next two years, which is a low market value for a guy of like Patrick Mahomes who's just entering his prime. Not only that, it's very team friendly. It's only one hundred forty and guaranteed. So yes, he gets the long term guarantee, but it's only 140. That's not that's not a lot that the team is paying. But they is, easily, are they going to be? Willing? They can easily restructure it five years down the road. It is really it's a really team friendly deal. Yes, but are they going to be willing to to deal out money to Chris Jones, knowing how much money Patrick Mahomes could make with incentives? Yes, you that's so? that's their clear that's their clear plan. Adam Schefter reported it. They made this deal so they can get Chris Jones for the next two years. They're focused on winning for the next two years, but I think let's let's go off that. That's another debate, right? Let's focus on passing touchdowns. I just think Carson Wentz, right? He's just always had an act for throwing touchdowns. He's always done it in his career at North Dakota State. So I know that, but how can – I can't – look, you guys are underestimating the stat. The stat is not something that hap- that is, you know, easy to predict. Like last year – like Russell Wilson has led it. And then he's also fallen off a cliff with, in terms of touchdown next year. Same thing with Drew Brees. We, it's a very unpredictable stat and I cannot give it to the guy. That's just most like easily predictable, especially because Patrick Mahomes job is to win games, not to just 
because Carson Wentz will be required to throw the ball more. I don't, I don't, Miles Sanders is a great receiver out the backfield too, but I don't trust the running game. I don't think it's as consistent. And Carson Wentz has shown me that he can throw the ball in tight spaces. I'm going to roll with him. Patrick Mahomes is an easy, it's one of those easy guys uh, to pick, but I think you guys are underestimating the stat. It's not, it's not an easy stat to predict. And I think Carson Wentz has the Stats Hmm? do repeat. They do repeat, but very rarely. Very, very rarely. Who predicted Jameis Winston would lead the league in yards and touchdowns? It's a very hard stat to predict. Passing is the hardest. Passing is one of the hardest stats to predict. All of these are hard to predict. You don't know, but you don't know what quarterback is in the position that he has to throw a lot. Like Jameis Winston, he had no running game. He had to throw the ball. I believe Carson Wentz's running game will kind of stagger next year. I think Miles Sanders is more of a kind of a receiving back. So is Clyde Edwards Hilaire, by the way. Yeah, Edwards Hilaire is a receiving back, too. I agree, but Damian Williams showed you flashes of being able to run the football outside and i think that's what they're gonna do look patrick Mahomes is the easy bet i think you guys are no chiefs running back had more than five on the ground i'm sorry no chiefs running back had more than five scores on the ground that doesn't again but look at the super bowl look at the playoffs i'm telling you for next season look my point was this patrick Mahomes' job is to win games which he will do he will find ways to make plays with his legs his arms and everything but i just don't think it would result in passing touchdowns it's an easy bet uh, but I just, I just think Carson Wentz. I think he has this 33 to 42 range, which I'm expecting from him. And you guys know I like Carson Wentz, and I, I believe in him. So you don't think Mahomes will get that same range? No, he can. I think he'll uh, come in top three. Okay. So yeah, I, I want to see what you guys think. Uh, if you're on YouTube watching this, we're going to put up a little poll for the two passing ones. We'll do it for all the stats. I want to see who you guys think kind of on the ones we're debating. But if you guys don't mind, I'll start us off for rushing yep. yards. And I had, a, I had a repeat number here. I've got Derrick Henry leading the league in rushing again because we've seen that the Tennessee Titans rely on him to run the ball. And if the playoffs show us anything, they will give him as many carries as possible for, to win games. And like you said, Der- the Titans' job is to win games, and the way they do that is by feeding Derrick Henry. And so I believe that that is what they will do next year, and Derrick Henry will lead the league in rushing yards yet again. Shrikar, you want to go? I'll go next. I think that's fair. Um, I went I went with someone who you might not really think of like off first like off for a first thought but I'm going with Saquon Barkley here um assuming he's overcome that ankle injury I mean I think he can revert to his rookie form uh the Giants selected Andrew Thomas with the fourth pick um he can seal the edge on run plays he's definitely going to help that O-line he's going to help open run lanes for Saquon um and the Giants are going to run an offense that's similar uh to the Cowboys scheme uh under Jason Garrett and each season between 2016 and 2019, Dallas ranked top 10 in rush attempts. I feel like the Giants could feature Barkley like the Cowboys did Ezekiel Elliott when he won two rushing titles in 2016 and 2018. Uh, so that's why I'm going with Saquon Barkley. My runner up here was Christian McCaffrey, uh, but I do respect having Derrick Henry there, of course. Again, guys, it's hard to predict these it's, types dude, of deaths. Hard. Look, Jack, I know you want to repeat, but tell me. there. Look, I looked it up. It, I could not find a single repeat on each stat that we've we've had here. It is so hard to predict, and I'm gonna throw one at you, which it's not. It's actually not biased, and it's actually very. It's very. It's a very very weird prediction. I'm actually gonna go with Nick Chubb, and hear me out on this one. No, 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 no way. Hear me out on this one. <laughs> Listen, second in rushing yards, even with Kareem Hunt, and I know he only had him for half the year, but hear hear me out. Stefanski runs the ball okay with you saw it with dalvin cook he's a type of guy to run it on first run it on second and if he can run it on third he is the type of guy to do that especially with outside schemes and now that they have two good tackles they've always had good interior linemen i think riot wyatt teller from uh as my right guard it needs to develop more but they have good interior linemen i like the tackles they're good for uh zone schemes and that's what stefanski likes to run and guess who's one of the best of outside schemes nick chubb he showed what he could do when he was given the ball and Stefanski is going to run the ball consistent. That's what, that's how he succeeded when he was able to call plays after what 13 years in the organization, they finally gave him the keys to the offense and Dalvin cook absolutely took off. And I believe Nick Chubb is more talented than Dalvin cook. So you give him the, uh, you give him the keys. He's one of those more big, big play type of guys. I'm telling you, I think he's going to lead the league in rushing. I think the Browns are going to have a very good rushing offense. It's very underrated. I think people are sleeping on that fact. And I think, what happened with Nick Chubb was he was he was the clear leader, right? And then Derrick Henry ca- caught up to him because the reason why the Browns lost their final three games was because, I hate to say it, but they put the ball in Baker's hands too much. And you need to put it in your star. You need to give it to Nick Chubb. And that's what won them their games when they went two and six. They started to pick up some steam because Nick Chubb was having his success. And I'm telling you, I think he's the rushing yard leader. And 
I'm, t- I'm, I'm trying to avoid repeats because again, I'm telling you, it just doesn't happen in the NFL. It's very rare. So I'm going to go with Nick Chubb. It's a weird prediction. I know you guys are probably going to hate it, but again, I mean, 1500 yards and he barely got the ball. Imagine what he's going to do in, in Stefanski's offense. No, I, I don't hate it. I, I thought I really thought about Nick Chubb. I think he was probably who I'd have second, but I think that yes, Kareem Hunt needs to be taken into account because as a receiver though look that's what he was used as in the brown system they ran two running back sets right with madison sorry continue but i was just going to say that he's used more as a receiver yeah i think he will be used more as a receiver but he still will get his carries and they will feed him the ball not as much as chubb obviously but he's going to get carries that'll take away from chubb and that's undeniable i think having him for 16 games now uh, i think the reason that he got a lot less carries towards the end of last year was because he wasn't able to get fully acclimated to the offense in each of the first eight weeks. But I think now that he's going to get to go through the preseason and the actual full 16 game season with the team, he will get more carries. And so I just think that that is why I couldn't put Chubb at number one. Okay. Should we carry your thoughts on it? I think, I think it's, it's I think, Jack- no, I think point, you make, but- I think you make a good, a good argument for Nick Chubb. I probably had him maybe like third or fourth on my list. Cause of course I'd see a uh, CMC second. Um, but yeah, I kind of do agree with Jack that Hunt is only going to get more used to this offense. And I think he's going to get more carries as well as more touches out of the backfield uh, as a receiver. Um, so that's why I had Chubb that low. But uh, I do respect your take. And I, and I, and I do think that it could happen. Um, Browns, I think they have the best run game. They could have the best run game. In they the have to. Uh, look, sorry, it all AFC depends North. on they, they have to run it outside, and which is what I think Stefanski. He is a lot more disciplined than what Freddie Kitchens is. He's not going to tolerate, you know, Odell or Jarvis calling for the ball <laughs> like Kitchens. that. He's it was I, like, like just watch the cardinals game and you'll you'll know what i'm you'll understand what i'm saying just run the ball outside that is what nick chubb is good at he can run in between the tackles as well i'm telling you i think it's i think it's not a long shot uh but yeah Speaking- i really respect both of your takes i just don't think with derrick henry i wanted to make a quick note on this they lost jack conklin uh that's one point i think that was a big loss for them it's going to be underrated also this Titans, I think, will be – there's going to be a lot close games, and I think they're going to have to rely on Tannehill more, like they did in the regular season. So I think – and also one, Derrick Henry went on an anomalous run. Like this was this was insane what he was doing. I mean, consi- I think it was like 100 yards in all, all eight games and, and then playoffs too. Like that was that was crazy. I don't think anyone expected that. Like there were questions at the beginning of the year with Deion Lewis and Derrick Henry, but I told you guys, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And Derrick Henry had an amazing finish, but – now more teams have film on, a film on him, and now people respect it. They're going to respect the running game a lot more with the Titans, kind of like the Chiefs did, and they're going to dare Tannehill to throw. I think he can uh, succeed in that, but obviously a lot of people are doubting Tannehill. This is his proved year, obviously, with that big contract. So I just don't think Derrick Henry is going to get the same opportunities as he did last year with teams not respecting him after that four-game stretch he had two years ago. But I think now people finally realize what I've been trying to say is Derrick Henry is a very good running back. And they're going to kind of respect him more, but of course he's gonna. I think he's gonna amass twelve hundred easy. And speaking of Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb, those are actually my top two for rushing touchdowns. I had Nick Chubb as my runner-up, and I'm going with Derrick Henry uh, for rushing touchdowns. Since 2018, Henry lists second in rushing touchdowns with 28. Uh, coaching staff they're gonna lighten his load because they drafted Darrington Evans, uh, but still, Arthur Smith he should continue to give him the ball within the red zone. Uh, he got 13 t- rushing touchdowns inside the opposing team's 20-yard line last year. Um, he definitely he definitely epitomizes uh, the Titans' physical offense. So I don't think – we shouldn't really expect the coaching staff to move away from him at the end of drives. Um, Henry, he may not win back-to-back rushing titles, but I think he can continue uh, to do what he does, truck his way through defenses near the goal line, um, be the engine of that offense. Um, and, yeah, I, th- I think he could get maybe like – 15 rushing touchdowns uh, I'd, I'd say 15 it's a it's a yeah, high number i mean so yeah I, I this is the one that i think is a little bit hard to predict because a lot of the times that you could see a person who leads in yards but not exactly as much in touchdowns uh and so i wanted to go with a team that i thought wouldn't pass for a whole ton of touchdowns this year and also had a great running back and that led me to to the new Las Vegas Raiders with Josh Jacobs, who I think could. Wow, I like that. I like that. I really I think like Josh Jacobs could lead in rushing touchdowns. He's obviously a bruising back who is devastating in the red zone. Uh, and I think that with problems with Derek Carr quarterback, and I'm not really sure what I'm getting from the receiver group, I think that they might turn to the run a lot more, especially in the red zone. And I can see Josh Jacobs getting in the end zone more than anyone else in the league this year. 
that's very bold. But I do like it. I think it's a bit far-fetched, though. I think I need to see another year because I didn't get a lot of touchdowns from Josh Jacobs last year. I needed more from him uh, in the red zone, but I think it could happen. I think they need to run outside with him more a little bit. I think that's not a bad prediction. I think this is the rushing. This is the aspect where I'm going to go with CMC rushing touchdowns. I just think with the Panthers, it's just in the red zone since 2017. He has just been their go-to guy. I wish this was a total touchdown segment, then I would go CMC, no question. But I think even rushing touchdowns, I think he has a very good shot just in the red zone in general. And I think he's still that big play explosive guy. So I got to go with CMC here. I, I'm not going to go 15 against regard. I think we're, we're ignored. 15 is a very, very hard number to hit. Uh, it hasn't been I hit. Know. Two years ago, it wasn't even hit. Last year, yeah, three people hit it. But I think 15 touchdowns is a decent mark. I just, again, you guys are repeating and it's just hard to, it's hard to go with a repeat, but I, I can see Derrick Henry. My honorable mention is actually Ezekiel Elliott. And I know Dallas is going to throw the ball a lot more. But who better to give it at the goal line than Ezekiel Elliott? And he has always been a guy to have double-digit touchdowns when he plays the full year. So I can I see him? Ah, look, this is a very bold prediction. I think he goes for 16-plus if if they do it right, if Dallas can really do it right and they don't. Because I don't – Amari has just not been that red zone threat that I was looking for. And I don't – same with Gallup. Gallup's not a red zone threat. He's just that big play guy. Uh, same with C.D. Lamb. He's just a yak guy as well. I haven't seen them in the red zone do what I expect them to do yet. And Ezekiel Elliott could amass that same with Christian McCaffrey, but I'm not going to go that far as to say that, but easily, I think I can see both of them getting 12 plus. Yeah. I thought about Ezekiel Elliott too. Do you guys mind if I moved to receiving yards? Mm -hmm. Sure thing. So uh, when looking at receiving yards, I think that, I mean, there was a huge margin between the top and the second last year. <laughs> yeah. Jack, who was, yeah. who was the leader again? Uh, no, Michael Thomas. And he will be the leader this season as well. I believe new Orleans is the best team in the NFL and they will win the Super Bowl. And so you just go with the number one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I, Okay. I don't we'll like save it for later. We'll save it for later. <laughs> so, okay. So the way I think about it is the team that I think will play the best and their number one receiving option. And that team doesn't have a, a ton of top tier receiving options other than Thomas. I think Emmanuel Sanders is good. Jared Cook is good. And Alvin Kamara can be good out of the backfield. But a lot of the, t or a lot of the yards, I think, will go to Michael Thomas. And that is how they win games. And I think they will try it again this year. And you like to believe Michael Thomas is the number one receiver in the league. And so he will lead the league in receiving yards this year. Man, this is so funny. Please, Trigger, let me get this. is so funny because my leader is actually. I have the same Jones. thoughts as you. I have the Mine same is thoughts. Julio Jones. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because, look, oh, man, I just, I think Michael Thomas is, look, I think he's going to get his yards, but I think Julio Jones is going to reestablish himself getting more. He had 1,300, I think, last year, if I'm not mistaken. I so I think he's going to re, I think he's going to get, I think he's going to get 1,600. I think Michael Thomas, three. I think he's getting 1,600. Wow. I think, I think he's cool. And just quick note on your Saints pick again, Jack. I can't name you a single time in the NFL in NFL history where the best roster has won the Super Bowl. So slow your roll on that I, one. No, I just I, it's not even that they're the best roster. I don't think they are the best roster. I just I think the, they are, you think the Chiefs are. I think the Chiefs and the Ravens haven't beat. Yeah, the, maybe the Niners. Well, we'll discuss that later. I don't want to bring that up, but <laughs> let's keep going with the receiving yards. I think I think Julio Jones is going to uh, re get it again. I told you Matt Ryan is my passing yards leader. I think Julio Jones is going to do the same in his own field. I just think they're going to throw it. Uh, they're going to find their chemistry again. It's another year. I think Atlanta, what they've been, the, what their problem is ever since their Super Bowl appearances, they've started slow to start the year, right? And they pick it up at the end. They've always been that type of team to go one and six to start the year and like five and two to finish it. It's what I need. I think they're going to, they're going to hit the ball rolling uh, first few weeks. I'm not going to say they're going to go to the Super Bowl like Jack did, but I'm going to say that they do pretty, <laughs> they have a pretty successful year. Uh, and I think Julio Jones and Matt Ryan will be a big part of that. Yeah, I think my thoughts, I also went with Julio Jones. Um, the Falcons didn't re-sign one of their top three pass catchers for the 2020 season, Austin Hooper, uh, who ranked third on the team in yards last year. He went to the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Atlanta added Todd Gurley to the backfield. Good but point. I mean, he saw a sharp decline in touches with the Rams last season. Uh, he passed the Falcons physical, but I mean, they're going to exercise caution because of his arthritic knee. So with that uncertain workload for Gurley, uh, you got Hayden Hurst in his first year with the team after two seasons in Baltimore. I think Matt Ryan is going to lean heavily on Julio Jones in the passing game. Uh, Jones has led the league in receiving yards twice, uh, 2015 and 2018. You might have to fact check me on that one. Uh, he hasn't shown signs of decline either. Um, at least 1,394 yards in six consecutive seasons. I mean, I think he's going to deliver gaudy numbers with more targets likely coming his way. I think, he, I think he'll go for 1,600 as well. Yeah. Hey, just quick point, quick point. Quick sleeper, guys. I just wanted to throw it out there. 
Let's hear Devontae it. Parker. Devontae <laughs> Parker, quick sleeper. And I know uh, I have some friends who – I have a friend who's a Broncos fan who's going to hate me for saying this because he, he's mad that I put Parker over Sutton. But hear me out, okay? Just hear me out. Parker led the AFC in receiving yards. He led the AFC in receiving touchdowns. He's going to get the ball thrown to him a lot more, I'm telling you. And I know Preston Williams comes back. Um, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, with Tua – Fitzpatrick just the Dolphins are going to be in more games they're not going to take the first half of the year as lightly as they did he's a sleeper guys I'm telling you I, I can see 1400 in his future and it's a sleeper him and Allen Robinson are my two sleepers but I'm going to go with Devontae Parker's my main guy that I could see have an amazing season and I'm putting a lot of stock in him so please Devontae Parker please prove me right uh and also destroy the Jets for me twice but uh yeah that is my sleeper I think, I mean, if only you viewers could could have been there for the FaceTime calls where we're yelling at each other over Michael Thomas and Julio <laughs> Jones. Of course, I'm the one taking Julio, and they're the ones taking Michael Thomas, and we flip-flop for these predictions. I Pretty really wrong. Like it's, Julio. It's super and close. I saw an interesting thing the other day that the Falcons have the most vacated targets of any team in the league, meaning that the, the players that they targeted last year that are gone now took up the most targets of any team in the NFL. Exactly, so uh, that helps yeah. Julio's case. No, I, I really wanted to put Julio. I just believe that the team I believe will be the best team and I trust and their number one receiving option. I just, I had to give it to Michael Thomas. I think that Julio will have, hey, I'm, I, it's a win-win for me. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Julio will have Calvin Ridley who I think will go over a thousand yards to take some of that away from him. And I just don't believe that Emmanuel Sanders, Jared Cook or Kamara will take as much from Michael Thomas as Julio will take. Yeah. Away from him. But uh, I, they're, they're my one and two. And I think they will be for years to come still. Who wants to get us started on receiving touchdowns? This is an interesting one. I, I, can I, can I do this? I think. Sure, man. Look, yeah, go ahead. Look, people, it's just the guys that people are sleeping on that I'm picking here. Receiving touchdowns is a stat that is the hardest one to predict. I think this it's, was one of the hardest one to predict. I spent but, so long with this. But people forget who is a consistent touchdown machine. And that is Devontae Adams. That is, he is one of my favorite receivers in the NFL that gets very overlooked. His route tree is just, impeccable Shrieker and I did this on the um top 10 in the AFC but I I didn't say who my number one was and it was a clear cut Devontae Adams his route tree is just it's incredible I think he can run any route in the NFL he is just so underrated I think people I, I I love that he's getting the love that um I wanted him to get people are starting to put him in the top five and I appreciate that he is my number four wide receiver in the NFL today and I'm telling you he is what 10 touchdowns, 10 or more touchdowns in three straight years. And then obviously last year he got hurt, but he still amassed, I think it was more than six. Uh, he's just a touchdown machine, a fantasy God. You guys have, uh, if you guys have him available in your fantasy team, I actually asked a couple of guys, can you name me? Can honestly, I'll ask you guys this too. Can you name me three receivers that are better in fantasy than Devontae Adams? I, I don't think you can uh, for a full season. Michael Thomas. So that's my receiver. Michael, Michael Thomas. Nah, can't give it to you. I can't give it to you there. Michael Thomas it's is not, gonna get the touchdown. Doesn't get the touchdown. He was the number one receiver in fantasy last year, by the way. Yeah, by yards and PPR. I'm talking like I'm talking. I don't play PPR, but uh, I think Devontae. Adams Even non PPR, I would I would assume that he was above. I think he was two. I think he was. No, Adams, wasn't, Adams wasn't close. Chris was Godwin. For, Adams was injured for five. Adams was injured for five games, so it wasn't close. But that, when he came in, he had, too, but. he had a touchdown every game, and he had two. Uh, he had two a couple of games. So I think Devontae Adams is someone that people aren't recognizing, and I think this was actually. This was actually an easy one for me. I thought Devontae Adams was pretty. And uh, my quick sleeper was Cooper Cup, who had 10 last year, and I think he's going to get more now that Brandon Cooks is out. So what are your guys' thoughts on those two? Okay, so my pick, I think it was a little out of the box. I went with a tight end here. Um, I'm going to go with Zach Ertz. Um, and it might, it might come as a surprise to you guys, but um, as Anish said before, Doug Peterson isn't shy about putting all this pressure on Carson Wentz to move the ball through the air in recent years. Uh, the Eagles have fielded a productive aerial attack, which ranked 12th or better in touchdowns each of the last three seasons. And since the hmm. Eagles drafted Wentz. Okay, I think that helps my case for Wentz. Yeah, since the Sorry. Eagles drafted Wentz in 2016, Zach Ertz leads the club in receiving touchdowns with 26. He has become a reliable pass-catching option and a safety blanket for Carson Wentz. And Philadelphia has notable question marks at wide receiver. There is no timetable for Alshon Jeffrey's return from a Liz Frank injury. Uh, the Eagles, they should exercise pace, uh, patience with rookie first rounder Jalen Rieger. Um, he hasn't experienced a live practice, you know, because of all this coronavirus and all the restrictions. And Deshaun Jackson, 
hasn't had more than four touchdown catches in a season since 2014. Wentz and Ertz could become a dominant duo throughout the 2020 campaign, you know, with injuries, uh, uncertainty, and like low scoring production in general among the team's pass catching group. And because the two have this established relationship, I, th I think it's easy to see why he may put together his best season. And I'll say he gets double digit touchdown receptions. I, it's, it's pretty bold, but I, I'm going to go with Zach Ertz here. Yeah, it's interesting to, to take a tight end, especially one who has probably the best backup tight end in the league behind him in Dallas Goddard. But yeah, I mean, yeah, see? I know Anish is feeling himself right now because, you know, after his Carson Wentz prediction. But I, when you look at it, the, the quarterback that throws the most passing touchdowns, it's most likely who's going to have the most receiving touchdowns will be on their team. So since I had Patrick Mahomes, I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill. We've seen what he can do. He has tons of big plays, and you see him in games coming up clutch with touchdowns. And since I believe Patrick Mahomes will lead the league in passing touchdowns, his go-to target on the receiving end is Tyreek Hill. And Tyreek Hill likes to find the end zone. I think he found it seven times last year, even though he missed, missed some games. Uh, so I've got Tyreek Hill to lead the league in receiving touchdowns. Both of you guys had – I like the picks. I, I don't like the Zach Ertz pick as much. It's actually kind of ironic, even though I think Wentz is going to lead the league. Who is Zach Ertz is not touchdowns to then? Uh, Dallas Goddard has been a better red – was a better red zone threat last year. Uh, and – also, I just wanted to point out, Jack, uh, just a quick note on the Kelsey Kittle debate. Kelsey only had five touchdowns last year. Not not the best, but okay, we'll, we'll leave that aside. But um, back to the whole Zach Ertz thing. I, I think when well, he had six touchdowns last year, he's honestly a consistent eight-touchdown guy. I can rely on eight to ten. I just don't see him leading the league, having that Eric Ebron-type season. I just don't see that. Uh, I think Dallas Goddard's going to steal some from him just because of his red zone ability. He's a, a big guy and the easy target in the end zone. And I'm, I know Jack's trying to look up stats on Kittle to try and prove me wrong here, but <laughs> 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 but back to back to my thing. I think Tyreek Hill has a definite chance. He had 12 uh, a couple years back. I just I don't know. Again, I think Kelsey's going to have more than five uh, <laughs> than he did last year. Um, same thing with McCall Hardman. I think he's going to get a lot more of that Tyreek Hill type touchdowns, those big 40 yard plays. So I I, I think Tyreek Hill is a, a definite uh, guy, but. When you talk about consistency, I'm telling you there's no one better than Devontae Adams. And I think Cooper Cup, who had 10 last year, is just going to just gonna have uh, more than 10, I think, given more opportunities with Jared Goff and less with Brandon Cooks. And Robert Woods has never been that type of guy to get touchdowns. He's never had. So I think Cooper Cup's that uh, guy to do it all fashioned, whether it be in the red zone off a of slant or just a deep play. I think Cooper Cup and Devontae Adams are my two guys that I think will, could have uh, a chance at leading it. And I think people are sleeping on both of them. But uh, I think let's kind of move on here to yards from scrimmage. I think that's the one we're going to go yep. to. Uh, I'm going to give my quick one. Now, you might think I go CMC, and I think both of you are going to go with that. And I think a lot of people are going to go with that. I'm not going to go with CMC. And I'm, the, I'm a huge Chris McCaffrey fan. I, I loved him coming out of Stanford. But I, I'm going to go with Saquon Barkley here, a guy who led it his rookie season. And – Listen, I, year three, Saquon, I think he's he's 100% now. Uh, and D Daniel Jones is going to throw him the ball a lot more out the backfield. I don't expect him to lead the league in rushing, as I said earlier. But I think, can I see another 1,300, 900, um, 1,300 rushing, 900 receiving yard season from him? Most definitely. And I think 2,200 is enough to lead the league. I think he will, him uh, as a receiver, I think his, uh, people overlook it a lot. Uh, and he showed so many flashes of it last year coming back from injury just even his rookie year, I think he's going to lead the league in scrimmage yards. See, I, I know you say a lot of people will, will pick Chris McCaffrey, and a lot of people will be right with that prediction, uh, I believe. I think Chris McCaffrey is the easy pick, but it's also he's given you no reason to doubt him to lead the league. Not in at all. I mean, to, to see what he has done over the last two years, it's phenomenal. And I believe that this year – Best running back in the NFL. It, I mean, he is. And, and he's the big – I think he is the most – other than quarterbacks, the most valuable player to any team in the league. Here we go again. I can't, again, I can't. Uh, other than tough, quarterback. Tough argument, tough argument, because I haven't, I love Christian McCaffrey. It's funny. I'd have to I look actually, into it. I picked him number one in fantasy last year. Everyone looked at me like I was crazy over Saquon, but, you know, it was proven right. But, okay, beyond the point, sorry, I digress. But uh, Christian McCaffrey, I don't, look, that, to just quick note on the most valuable thing, I haven't seen him single-handedly win games. Unfortunately, I haven't seen that. I mean, uh, can you imagine 
the Panthers without a Christian. Yeah, McCaffrey. yeah, they would be terrible. But I haven't seen him truly win them a game. Like the one I expected him to win was one Tampa Bay where they lost, uh, and he got stuffed on fourth down. And also the Packers game on the road in the snow with Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen actually kept them in that game. I needed Christian McCaffrey to do that for me, and I didn't get that. Those are two counts. But Christian McCaffrey, no question, best running back in the NFL. Uh, he's my favorite running mm-hmm. back to watch. But again, I think people. It's not. It's not a question of who's the easy pick. It's. It's he should be the clear favorite, but it's which running back can emerge and surpass him. That's the question. No one. I think that's I mean, people are. There, he has not given you a single reason to believe to doubt, that I'm he not will doubting, be surpassed. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's going to uh, regress. I'm just saying someone takes the leap and jumps over him. I, that's not that. My point is, I think Chris McCaffrey will go over two thousand. I think that's uh, it's almost. A I, mean, I, think it's awesome. I think Saquon can too. That's my point, though, and I think he Saquon will take was actually that my leap. runner-up. I think I think he'll take that leap to go over. I think that he and there could be another running back that does it. I can't I can't name one off the top of my head, but again, we're overlooking players that take leaps in the NFL. The NFL is the hardest the hardest sport to predict in any fashion. Records, division winners, Super Bowl winner, um, just anything in general, uh, stats even. It's so hard, and I you've got to recognize leaps, and you also got to recognize regression. Um, and I don't think Mr. Christian McCaffrey is going to regress any bit, but I don't think he will have the same insane year. I think he'll still have a really good year. I think could he top it? Yeah, I think there's. I would bet on him topping it. But also, I got to recognize the fact that what he had, it's he's not going to have Trey Turner on his offensive line. He's not going to have. He's going to have a little bit less with Teddy Bridgewater. I think they're going to let him throw a little bit more than Kyle Allen and Will Greer. Uh, they're going to be down a lot in uh, in games, so they're going to uh, make them throw. So but I he, think Chris he, McCaffrey, when they throw the ball, he's still, he's still he, there. Top target. He is. That's, that's why I'm saying he's going to be my number two. If I put Saquon at one, it's, it's not like I'm putting Chris McCaffrey like five. I'm, I'm just saying, I think someone's going to take that leap and just over, uh, overachieve in just such a fashion. I think Saquon Barkley's the guy that I'm going to bet on. I mean, it's interesting. Shrikar, did you want to kind of give your final touch on this one? Yeah, I think, if I had to give like an exact stat prediction, I'd say both go over 2K. I think Saquon's slightly over. I'd probably say like 2,100. Uh, with CMC, I'll probably say 2,300. I-, I think that's safe for both that's, of them. That's a lot, dude. But I mean, I, th- no, I lot, think he can dude. get it. I think, I think he can get it. <laughs> that, dude, that, that's a lot. Like He had 2,400 is- last year, McCaffrey. It's true. I like Chris McCaffrey. He's my favorite running back. So I'm, I, w- I would love to see him do it again. I just think Saquon Barkley is going to take that leap uh, just with his talent. But, of course, sure, no hate fair. to Christian McCaffrey. Clear-cut best running back. If I were to start a team, I would that's, take him yeah. question. Yeah, so and now, now we're going to the defensive side of the ball. I think defensive stats are a, a very hard to predict. I'd say they're a little bit harder to predict than offensive stats. And the first one we're going to start with is tackles for loss. And, you know, I was so in between on this one. I ended up going with a tie because I think that, the, I mean, this is a thing that people can tie on. I've got – Miles Garrett and Aaron Donald tying for tackles for loss. Aaron Donald led the league last year and has led the last 24. two years, I believe. Uh, and Miles Garrett, I believe, was leading when he was suspended or he was top three, top two. He was. Uh, yeah. And so I was so in between. I ended up going with a tie, which I believe is possible. Uh, and I think that Aaron Donald and Miles Garrett will lead in tackles for loss. Yeah, I went, I went with Aaron Donald. Uh, I tried not to overthink this one too much, uh, knowing that he's registered the most TFLs. Uh, in each of the last two seasons. And despite double and triple teams, I mean, he's he's an unstoppable force in the trenches against the run. Uh, in my opinion, best defender in the game. I know Jack thinks he's the best player in the game. Um, yeah. We could debate about that all day. And I mean, coming off his fifth uh, consecutive All-Pro, I, I think it's fifth, uh, 45 tackles for loss since 2018. I mean, that, that's crazy. And he's 29 years old, still in his prime. Uh, I think he's going to cause more chaos in opposing backfields. Um, you did mention Miles Garrett. Um, I also was going to throw in Joey Bosa a little bit um, because I, I think I think Joey Bosa. I I think I think he can still produce. I think I, a lot of people think he's overrated, but I mean, I, I like Joey Bosa a lot. So, okay, first off, it sounded like you thought Joey Bosa was old. He's drafted in twenty sixteen, but I got your point. Um, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. No, I'm not I talking about guys this. again with the whole repeats thing. I know Aaron Donald did it again. But we got to account for players that take that next step, players that take that leap. And the guy I'm going to go with is TJ Watt. Uh, He had 23 last season, which I believe was second or third, something like that. Uh, And TJ Watt, I think, is going to take that leap. And Jack, I know you have him as your early defensive player of the year candidate. Uh, I do, too. I think he has a good chance for it. I think he should be the favorite. And I think that's where he's going to take his leap. I think he's going to take it in the run support, 
just in general, he is, he is just an amazing hybrid of a linebacker slash edge rusher. He is just incredible to watch. Uh, and I know I hate saying that as a Browns fan. I wish I could have him on my team, but TJ Watt is incredible. And I think he's going to lead the league in tackles for loss. Yeah, I, I have TJ Watt leading the league in sacks, not tackles for loss. But uh, I just believe that for an outside linebacker to lead the league in tackles for loss, I just think that Aaron Donald and Miles Garrett are better suited to do so. Uh, and Aaron Donald is just a wrecking crew. Like, you can never count count him out, especially in the tackles for loss department. He's seemingly always in the opponent's backfield. And I think that Miles Garrett playing with that D-line around him and letting him come off the edge for tackles for loss, I – I just think he's going to be on a mission this year. And a lot of people kind of forget where he was when he was suspended last year. And I know niece, you're going to love me talking, <laughs> talking up the Browns a little bit, but people forget where he was. I had him as my defensive player of the year. I think we literally did our pre- early. Me predictions. too. Me too. We did yeah. early predictions a week before he was suspended. And I had him as my paper defense player of the year. I know you didn't specifically, uh, even though you say you did, but. Uh, I think that he will he will tie Aaron Donald tackles for loss and T.J. Watt, who you mentioned, will lead the league in sacks. It was between him and Chandler Jones for me, uh, but I gotta stay true to my prediction that T.J. Watt will win Defensive Player of the Year, and that means he will lead the league in sacks. So I did go with Chandler Jones for sacks. Uh, since Jones arrived in Arizona, he leads the NFL in sacks uh, with 60. Uh, he ranked first in the league in sacks, came within a half sack of tying Shaquille Barrett for the top spot last year. Uh, this offseason, Arizona acquired two pass rushers who can divert some attention away from Jones on the edge. Uh, the Cardinals signed Jordan Phillips and Devon Kennard, who combined for 16 and a half sacks with their previous teams last season. So I think with the added help in the pass rush, uh, Jones could find clear pathways to the quarterback or face some advantages, single matchups. I think even if he continues to battle double teams, I think he's still a viable candidate to win the sack title. Um, he logged at least 11 in five straight seasons. So uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Chandler Jones here. I think the whole Devon Kennard and Jordan Phillips point actually hurts Chandler Jones. I don't think, but that being said, my leader is uh, Jack and I got it flipped. I have Miles Garrett as my sack leader. Uh, I think he is, again, like you said, you literally gave my explanation. He's on a mission, but I think he's on a mission to tackle quarterbacks. And I'm talking in the past game, he's going to wreck havoc. He's not going to be throwing any helmets, but he's going to wreck havoc. In hey, the we'll game. see. I mean, don't seem too confident Listen, about that. Uh, Maybe he'll think of his cleat people, this time. People think he's a bad guy for one mishap. I think it's like he hasn't done anything. No, he would, that's the only blemish on his resume. Exactly. He's great in service. He's done so much for the city. He's done so much for his college. Like, I, so, I mean, blemishes can ruin players' kind of reputation. I agree, but he's not going to be doing that again. I don't, I don't think he will. I think Stefanski will discipline him a lot more. Uh, same with Andrew Barry, someone who I think we're underestimating as a player's person. Uh, but yeah, I think Miles Garrett will lead the league in sacks. He was, I believe, leading it, uh, or no, I think he was top three before he got injured. I think he had 10 in 10 games, which is pretty solid. I think he's obviously going to take that leap uh, going against uh, easier offensive lines because he had 10, let me give it to you this way, he had 10 in a very hard schedule playing the Seahawks, the Patriots, the Niners, just good offensive lines in general. And he kind of didn't, he missed the week half of the schedule. So uh, I think he would have gotten, I think he would have broke, I think he would have broken the 20 sack mark for last year. I think he can do it this year. Uh, but my honorable, ben- honorable mention was Chandler Jones. I think, Shrikar, you did make the great point. Even though Kennard and Phillips are there, I think Chandler Jones is just a consistent guy that you got to watch out for. I think Isaiah Simmons will help bring uh, open up gaps for him as well. So I think Chandler Jones is my honorable mention. Yeah, I mean, I love Chandler Jones. I think he's – you could say he's the most underrated player in the National Football League, uh, and you've seen – you've seen yeah, – I think it's up there. With the lack of primetime games, I'd say he's underrated. No, he's very – I don't know if he's the most underrated player. I'd have to look into it more. I yeah. believe – I don't know who did. I think PFF put Nick Chubb as their uh, most underrated player. But oh, I don't, I don't think <laughs> I don't think it's Chubb, but I do love the pick. But I don't know if it is him. I would have to look into it more. But, yeah, Chandler Jones is severely underrated. Yeah, I mean, I love Chandler Jones. But TJ Watt, uh, if I'm, if I'm going to have him as Defensive Player of the Year, I've got to have him leading the league in sacks, which I think he's completely capable of. I mean, if there was a forced fumbles category, I, I mean, if we bring it up right now, I think TJ Watt would lead the league in forced fumbles as well. If you guys want to give a quick hit on that one. I think Chandler Jones could have, but I think he had eight last year. I think he would get a good I think, amount. Man would be, too, I remember that. He would be my early pick. I think Chandler Jones, maybe, maybe even Vaughn Miller. I think, look, there's another sleeper I want to throw out there. And I don't think you guys – would have even remotely thought of this. I don't think any NFL would have remotely thought yeah, of this. Like you're a Broncos fan, Bradley, Bradley Chubb. Chubb. I don't think injuries. anyone was even thinking about. It. I honestly it just came to my mind now. 
people are sleeping on him. I, I have said this so much, but <laughs> like he came into the league and he had a really good rookie season. I know. I agree. Like I, people just forget. I mean, I know he has a torn ACL, but uh, defensive linemen have shown that they can recover from that. Yeah, and I believe he's an outside linebacker anyway. So I think he can lead the league in force fumbles. He's one of the sleepers that people are, um, are missing out on in any of these stats. I think people are just forgetting who Bradley Chubb is a top five pick clear cut. He was the, one of the best defensive players in that draft class. Uh, so with Jarrell Casey and Shelby Harris on the inside now. Oh yeah, exactly. Uh, Von Miller, Von Miller, Von Miller. Who are you going to block? I mean, who are offensive yeah. linemen going to yeah. block? <laughs> exactly. I think this uh, 2020 Broncos defense, it's, it's going to be something to behold. Yeah. So speaking of the, the 2020 Broncos defense for interceptions, I picked Justin Simmons. I picked Justin okay. Simmons the safety. Okay. I think he had four or five last year, and yeah, four. interceptions is it's impossible to predict. I guarantee you, none of us will be right uh, because yeah. seemingly every you know, year, it's tough. It's it's just it's so hard. Like it's this is probably the hardest one. <laughs> it's really a there's really no right answer. Because, I mean, you could have a ball bounce one way and have it fall to the turf or go out of bounds, or have it bounce the other way and you're taking it to the house for six uh, off an interception. Uh, and there's years where the great defenders just don't get thrown at. And, exactly. And so perfect point. It's it's impossible to to do picks, but I didn't want to go with Gilmore or White because I believe they won't be thrown at as much this year because teams will realize, man, you can't throw. It doesn't it. work. Yeah, nope. so you might as well just not try. Uh, so I'm gonna go with Justin Simmons. Uh, I think that he he can make the big plays. He had four or five in a breakout year last year, and now that he's here to stay, I'll say he leads the league in interceptions. But I guarantee you that I'll be wrong. So Justin Simmons was my runner up. Um, I'm gonna go with another safety. I'm gonna go with Minka Fitzpatrick here. Uh, I think once the Steelers acquired Fitzpatrick from the Dolphins, their secondary became a more opportunistic, a more stingier group. Uh, Fitzpatrick put his ball hawking skills on display, something we haven't seen since he snagged six interceptions during his sophomore year at Alabama. Um, And in 14 games with the Steelers, uh, he recorded five interceptions, taking most of his snaps at free safety. Uh, He possesses natural instincts in off-ball coverage, and he can read the quarterback uh, he can force turnovers on the back end. And he seems happy in Pittsburgh, too. He seems really happy. Uh, Pittsburgh also has an aggressive pass rushing defense uh, that's ranked first or tied for the most sacks in each of the, each of the last three campaigns. So with that type of pressure up front, I think Fitzpatrick can pounce on these ill-advised uh, or these hurried throws. And we may see him make more strides in his first full year with the Steelers. But then again, Justin Simmons, it was so close. And I, I mean, interceptions in general is just... <laughs> I, I'd spent so much time with this, so I, I don't know. It's there's no right answer until you're proven wrong. It's like you guys like crafted your list kind of to get like mine is so like been so like far off from both of you, but um, <laughs> this is the only one that I thought could repeat, and that is Trey White. I just think he'll still get more opportunities uh, to get interceptions. He's just a ball hawk, uh, but I really like the Justin Simmons one, Jack. I think that is a very uh, underrated one that I didn't even think of. I thought he could get maybe five. I just didn't see him getting six or seven. I think that's a good pick just because they lost Chris Harris, and I need Justin Simmons to anchor that Broncos secondary if I'm a Broncos fan. So I think that was a really good pick. Uh, actually, now I'm getting more confident in my sleepers. I think Trey White was that kind of early guy that I was just like, okay, I think that's the best guy to repeat on this list. Now here are my two sleepers, and I think let's kind of round it out with this. Uh, Shrieker, I'm not going to go with Minka Fitzpatrick on the Steelers. I'm going to go with Joe Hayden. Um, a guy who mm-hmm. had three picks last year and look, he's going to get thrown the ball more. I think people are underestimating Joe Hayden. I think people think he's washed, which he's not. And he's not. as the player, as my first ever, you know, NFL idol, I think that was my first ever favorite player, uh, Joe Hayden, when he was on my Browns, seeing him leave to the Steelers was just absolutely heartbreaking, but what he's done for the Steelers has just been amazing. Uh, three picks. Yeah, Jack, I know you're kind of wiping your tears because you feel sad for me too, but, uh, Joe Hayden, I think can lead the league in picks. I think he's a ball hawk. He's just, he's got insane agility. I think people underestimate that. And I think this is the year. And another one, this one, this one, I'm actually, this one I'm really excited for. I really hope I could get this right. Uh, It's Jamel Dean for Tampa Bay. Hmm. Three picks uh, in, I think he only started five games and 17 passes defended. People are underestimating the Tampa Bay secondary. See what they look at is 32nd ranked. And you know why? It's because Jameis Winston threw the ball and threw so many picks that they were in just terrible positions. And obviously, if teams are going to get more opportunities to throw, then the secondary is going to allow more yards, and then they're going to be last. But if you really look at it, their secondary stepped up a lot, and Jamel Dean was a big part of that with his 17 passes defended in the little time he got. And when he plays the full year, I think teams are going to throw a lot more, thinking that, oh, the Bucks have a weak, uh, weak secondary. 
And I think Jamel Dean's going to get a lot of interceptions. I'm thinking five or maybe more. I'd like to first point out that Anish just said something good about someone else in the AFC North, which I thought was just interesting to point out. But I also Whoa, what do you mean? I put Joe Hayden. What in there? What I uh, true, it is Joe Hayden. I mean I love Joe Hayden. I love Joe Hayden. He's I mean, he's always been my favorite player. With like, five interceptions like last year, is he really a sleeper? Who? Joe Hayden. It's tough because like Again, people think Minka Fitzpatrick is the main leader, like Shrikar, uh thought of it there. But yeah. it's really a really f- – Minka and Joe people Hayden benefited off each other. And people are sleeping on Joe Hayden. I think people are yeah. underestimating his ability uh, in that Steelers be secondary. Oh, yeah, because I'm think about it. Think about it. Joe Hayden and Minka Fitzpatrick usually played on opposite sides. Minka would play the weak side, and uh, Joe Hayden would play usually in his own kind of island. Um I think they're going to continue that, and people are going to shy away from Minka thinking, okay, he's in his own island. But really, Joe Hayden's going to be on his own, and I think he's going to really hold his ground against receivers. He plays a lot taller than he is. I believe he has a 5'11 frame, but he plays a lot taller than that. I've seen him uh, against my Browns and with them. So I think he has the potential to do it. But I think the one I'm really excited for is Jamel Dean. I think he's going to come out of nowhere. and People are going to finally recognize what we did with uh, Buck's way. We had the, uh, the whole episode with him, and we recognized Jamel Dean. I think people are going to finally see what he is. Yeah, I think the Steelers thing, it's really hard to see what the Steelers will play like. I think it's them and the Eagles are two of the hardest teams to predict because we don't really know what we're going to see from them. Uh, so The Eagles? What? I, I see a division winner and I see Carson Wentz leading, leading touchdowns. But, that's but, but the Eagles year to year are a very hard to predict team. Factual. So, I mean, I think it's really interesting. We've seen Anisha's intro skills. How does he fare in the outro? Let's find out. Yeah, I was just, I mean, <laughs> oh man, you put me on the spot, but hey, I think, I think we can, we can see how different our predictions are, and I think it's just so hard to predict this far out in July when OTAs haven't even happened, but you can see how different they were. Hopefully some of them are right. Hopefully some of my sleepers were right, but uh, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. You can check our links down below in the description. Please watch our podcast and listen to it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, and check out our Instagram down below, and we'll see you guys next time. Man, you know, I think that if they made it this far on the video, they've probably already listened to the podcast, but exactly what he said. On Spotify and Apple Podcasts, but okay. You know what? Yeah, just please go respond to the polls that we have here. We'll also put some up on Instagram to see who you guys think will lead statistics and then check out our links in the description. Other than that, you know, you did a pretty good job. So thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you next time.